Minus three, two, one. We have ignition. The dawn of the space age. Houston, uh, the angle has landed. Humanity had long dreamed of going into orbit, but it was, it was fictional. It wasn't going to happen. So the idea that we would go from the first flight in the early part of the 20th century to going to the moon by 1969, that's paradigm shattered. NASA is the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, founded in 1958, really for the peaceful exploration of space, scientific discovery, as a way really to extract from this entangled world of the you know, Department of Defense in the Cold War era. In the post-World War II era, really it was uh, kind of a challenge to understand who really was responsible for United States efforts in space. Before NASA really got its start, space was really the realm of imagination. And it was something that government money could not be spent on. So you find the researchers who were interested were doing upper atmosphere research. That really changed with the launch of Sputnik. Today, a new moon is in the sky, a 23-inch metal sphere placed in orbit by a Russian rocket. The launch of Sputnik in 1957 really came as a profound shock to the American public. There was this urgency, really, to catch up. Sputnik was a relatively small artificial satellite, an artificial moon, if you would. It was about the size of a beach ball, and it had enough instrumentation in it to be able to be heard from the ground. The surprise of Sputnik was really the one, two, three in sequence of Sputnik being launched on October 4 of 1957, but then Sputnik 2 was launched in November, just a month later, carrying Laika, the space dog. And the third part of that really was when the Americans tried to launch the Vanguard satellite. It exploded on the pad. That launch vehicle burst into flames and the satellite fell to the launch pad. A shocked America attempted to launch a grapefruit-sized satellite on the Vanguard rocket with disastrous results. The Russians have got an enormous A, scientific, B, psychological advantage over this country in the eyes of people all over the world. There will be considerable public pressure for information on why we're so far behind. In many ways, that Sputnik crisis was the beginning of NASA as we know it. It was founded almost a year to the day after the launch of Sputnik. Just after its creation in 1958, NASA really hit the ground running. The Mercury program was about putting a human being into space. The success of that, Alan Shepard's flight in May of 1961, proved out that we could do that. It's President Kennedy, as we all know, who puts America on a path to the moon, and that's the Apollo program. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. Project Apollo really was a huge investment in America in technology, science, mathematics, engineering. At any one point, 400,000 people from across the country were working in some component, some aspect of that program. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. July 1969, with the launch of Apollo, the landing on the moon and returning safely to Earth, that mission really did fulfill Kennedy's dream of going to the moon, of, of finally beating the Soviets, and something that was that incredible. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the over room at the White House. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you have done. People in the moment were very aware that they were watching something historic happen with the moon landing. Last night, something like 125 million Americans and uncounted millions in other countries saw a unique combining of romance and technology. And perhaps 50 years from now or more, when people think of the past, they will look at the pictures from last night. Well, the success of Apollo 11, the agency knew that was going to be really hard to follow up on. Uh, and as public attention really did begin to decline quickly after Apollo 11. The 1970s were a moment of a fair amount of social and economic tumult and frustration. And in many ways, the space program became a part of that. Some of the interest in the space program in the 1970s dipped off with the end of the Apollo program and the frustration of waiting for the next step to come into the picture. America's first space shuttle, and the shuttle has cleared the tower. 
As Project Apollo was winding down, really the question became, what's next? One of the things that we learned about from the Apollo missions was that that, that approach really wasn't sustainable. In order for a program to be sustainable long-term for humans in orbit, going to these long you know, duration destinations, you really do need international uh, collaboration. It can't be the Soviets versus the Americans as it was back in the day. Collaboration with nations begins pretty quickly on in the 1970s. A new adventure in the cooperative exploration of space. What you see is more of an attempt to, to reach out the Apollo-Soyuz test project. It was an attempt to do that, the handshake in space between the Americans and the Soviets. The Apollo-Soyuz test project really affected how spaceflight was done. Americans trained in the Soviet Union and got to go to Star City. The Soviet cosmonauts came to the United States and they both learned each other's languages. That became really important eventually with the International Space Station. The hope in the 1980s was that the space shuttle and the space station could come online at the same time, but ultimately decisions were made that the United States couldn't afford both. So going with the space shuttle program meant leaving the immediate plans for a space station behind. T minus 10, 9, 8. The space seven, shuttle program eight, was a project to create kind of reusable space plane, if you would and by doing so was going to open up this new era of everyday space flight. Space travel is never going to be routine as we'd hoped it would. But what it did was it gave us a platform, a platform for understanding what the challenges of space would be, how we would overcome those challenges, and what type of scientific program was possible. You really saw a moment of excitement, uh, of a renewed interest in space flight and renewed hope for what really would be possible with those larger crews on this research vehicle. It really was with the astronaut class of 1978 that NASA really does make a bold statement for diversity in its workforce, because it would be this class that would be more reflective of American society. You had women for the first time in the astronaut corps. You have African-Americans in the astronaut corps. Way back in high school, I had the thoughts of science and space, astronauts, etc. But, you know, where I came from, you know, that wasn't the kind of thing a black kid thought about. And the shuttle wouldn't just be a test for test pilots. It really would be for scientists, engineers to travel into low Earth orbit. So you need a diverse group of people really to solve those complex challenges. I think a woman or a man can do an equally good job uh, in the kinds of things that will be done in space. By nature, we are a diverse human species. So if we want to understand what's going on in our planet and or space, we need diversity of thinking. And I think NASA realized that early on. There they are, the crew of Mission 51L. The loss of the Space Shuttle Challenger in January of 1986 is a real turning point. It marks a slowdown for NASA, but not a stop really makes you sick to your stomach is the only way that I can explain my feeling. I was sick to my stomach. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. President Reagan gave a very impressive speech calling on the nation to get behind the space program and for the space shuttle program to continue. And that was really pivotal for NASA's ability to continue going forward. I've always had great faith in and respect for our space program. And what happened today does nothing to diminish it. The space shuttle was flying to low Earth orbit, but not necessarily to any place. The idea had always been that the space shuttle would necessitate a space station. The International Space Station is underway. A Russian rocket and two million pounds thrust could be the start of a new era. From the time the first two nodes come together in 1999, really to begin the process of building the International Space Station, its first habitation, humanity has been continuously in low Earth orbit for more than two decades now. It's just an incredible accomplishment, and it really does prove out what's possible as we move beyond low Earth orbit, as we return to the moon with Artemis and, and move on to Mars. Today, a huge part of NASA's mission continues that looking back at Earth from the platform of space. One of NASA's most important missions is making that data that it returns usable. 
in this new generation of earth science, we are actually trying to help more our society here on Earth. We are combining earth science with socioeconomic data sets to help understand what's going on in the climate and in, in the environment, bringing together science with community. In some ways, NASA stands at a bit of a crossroads right now, and it has a lot of potential and a lot of excitement. Commercial spaceflight is booming because NASA has been encouraging and supporting it. And at the same time, NASA is turning attention back to the moon. And there's always been the dream that Mars would be behind that. The science being done by NASA with the James Webb Space Telescope and with planetary exploration has really gotten us to know more about our solar system and our universe. Three, two, one, boosters in ignition and liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. In the next 65 years, I hope to see a NASA that is diverse and equitable in all the areas. I wanna see more collaboration and partnerships across not only the United States, but internationally. I wanna see people doing science with purpose. I wanna see everyone coming together to solve the most pristine of problems that we have in this planet. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.